Hello. Hey everyone. Hey Mr. Toad. I'm just gonna wait a few minutes because we have people coming in as we speak. If uh, obviously if anybody doesn't want to put on the video, that's fine. Um, just want to make sure everybody can hear me, so I assume you can. So just hang tight for a few minutes as people are coming in in flurries now. Um, I hope everyone that's here is having a good day. Um, that's all I have to say. Have a good, have a good one. It's gonna wait two or two or three more minutes. Just hang tight, I'll be right back.
one more minute and I'm going to get started. I know you guys have been patient so far. Okay, I'm going to get started. Um, just so everybody's aware, if um, uh, this is being recorded, so if you don't want to show your face or you don't want to ask questions at the end, you don't have to. Um, but if anybody couldn't make it, any of your friends couldn't make it or whatever else, I'll post it um, at some point, um, maybe tomorrow, as soon as tomorrow. Um, so uh, first of all, I just want to welcome you. I know it's summertime and you probably don't want to be doing this if you don't have to, but obviously, you're concerned enough to be here because you want to hear kind of what's going on. And I do want to preface it by saying that what we um, have going on right now, a lot of it's in place, but even in the last couple of weeks of summer, we're going to be changing things as we need um, for safety reasons uh, alone. Um, so I guess first off, I really want to apologize uh, that all of you have to deal with this. Um, as students, uh, you know, having your education interrupted and losing things in the spring, and now it looks like obviously to start school, we're in the same situation. So I feel horrible for you as an educator, as a, an assistant principal, as a parent, um, you know, I know how hard it is for all of you and, um, you know, and some more than others, uh, you know, some of you are, are you know, kind of roll with things and some of you might have anxiety. I have anxiety. I have anxiety for myself, for making sure everybody's safe in school, for my own kids at home and, and so forth and so on. So I just want to apologize and let you know that we all understand where you're at and, and how this impacts you and where to try everything we can to make sure everything goes right or as best we can uh, moving forward for the whole school year. Um, uh, you know, obviously it's not fair. Um, hopefully it's temporary. Uh, we don't have a crystal ball, um, but I can say that if we follow all the guidelines and all the safety requirements that I'm kind of going to go through today, we have a better chance of staying in school and maybe getting into even a better situation where we're in school more than not, um, and maybe hopefully as much as 100% at some time, but it's gonna take everybody uh, working together, following all the rules that we have in place and doing uh, your due diligence to keep each yourselves and each other safe under these, um, under these requirements that we have as a school. Now, I know a lot of you are very uh, in, you know, understanding of what's going on. Um, the reality is some of this stuff does not make sense. You know, we have these rules that we're following in school that aren't necessarily happening outside in the real world. For example, you, know, you can play youth sports and run around with your teammates uh, right now in a youth program, but we don't have sports right now in high school and you can't do any preseason training in high school. Um, so that's just one example. And I can go on and on and on about the things that are conflicting out there that's happening in the world that are going to be more restrictive um, at school. The example being masks. Uh, I watch my own kids. I watch, you know, kids out in public and they're hanging out. They're on their bikes together. They're playing together. They're doing things together um, without masks on. That's not going to be the case in school because we're required to keep you safe and follow certain rules. Okay. So, um, I'm just gonna get into safety first and what it's kind of gonna look like in schools. And then I'm gonna get more into instruction and how things are going to kind of operate, all right? So first thing, first thing on the list, and I have a huge list here. So again, if you can't stay the whole time or um, you have to leave for whatever reason, uh, this will be video, this is being recorded and I will post it so you can go back to it if you need to, all right? So the arrival of school, so we are required when you arrive at school to do two things. One is to confirm that you don't have a temperature, all right? And we're gonna do this two ways that we're allowed. We're going to, uh, I'm gonna give you four different examples, I should say. If you take the bus to school, there are now gonna be bus matrons on the bus. This is not the bus driver, somebody, an adult on the bus driver who's gonna not let you on the bus until you confirm that you don't have a fever that day and you're feeling okay. And if you didn't take a temperature check, they're going to have the ability to take your temperature before you get on the bus. So everybody that gets on the bus will have their temperature checked or have confirmed that their temperature, they do not have a temperature and they're not feeling ill. Okay. When you get on the bus, they're going to be six, uh, six feet 
a six foot distance, you know, every other chair or whatever it is, um, unless you are with a family member that you go to, you know, that you live with, then you could sit with that person. In fact, you'd be required to be sitting with that person. Okay. Um, so that's one check. If you get dropped off by a parent, now we're going to have personnel in the bus loop where the parents drop off. It's only going to be in the front. And there's going to be a person before you get out of your car that's going to speak to your parent or guardian and say, does he have a fever? Does she have a fever? Is she sick? You're going to, the parent is most likely going to say no, and then you're going to be allowed to go into the school. If you didn't get your temperature checked, those people are going to have a temperature, you know, a thermometer there to take your temperature if need be. Okay? So those are two options. Third option, if you're a walker to school, we're going to have people positioned at both sides of the school and in behind the school for anybody who walks to school and tries to come into the school to check them in the same manner. Lastly, if you're a student driver, if you're a senior with a senior license, um, or you're carrying people from your neighborhood or your friends in the car, the same operation is going to happen. Somebody's going to stop the car before you get out of the car and get into the school and check that you're feeling well or take your temperature if need be. Okay, those are requirements. It's not a center merges thing. Those are things we have to do. Everybody that walks in the school has to confirm that they're uh, healthy and they don't have a temperature. Um, same happens for teachers. Teachers have to self-report via a Google form every morning before they come into school, teachers and all staff, okay? Um, so some of you may ask, well, this is kind of silly. Like, you know, what if I lie? What if my teacher, you know, my, my parent uh, didn't really take it or my parent left in the morning or whatever else? We understand logistically, people may not tell the truth or may not be due diligence. That is why we are going to require, and we do require, that people wear masks. The thought process in this is that the more things that we do to protect everybody from each other, the better. So if we can prevent some people from coming to school because they're not feeling well that day because of this protocol, that is helping us. Even if somebody has, let's just uh, use the example that somebody may have COVID and not know it. They may not have a fever. They may not have all the symptoms. They may just be, have it and not have symptoms. That's why we have mask cover coverage um, uh, when you're in school. So that's uh, something that you should understand. Um, it's not all logical, but the more we are following as many safety protocols as possible, the safer we all are. And we can keep school open and possibly move to full school at some point, all right? So those are masks. I mean, those are, that's arrival at school. Um, and I should just go back at the end. If anybody has specific questions, you know, just keep keep note of them, and we'll ask answer questions at the end. If I didn't already say that. All right. As far as masks, where you're allowed to bring your own masks. If you don't have your own mask, the school will have to provide them for you. Okay. You will not be able to come in school without a mask on. Everywhere you are in school, you'll be wearing a mask, including in the classroom when instruction. The only time you will not be wearing a mask is when you're eating lunch and when you have mask breaks, okay? Um, so that is just, again, the law, the requirements, the restrictions that we have as a school from New York State and the CDC, all right? Um, just wanna point out, if somebody refuses to wear a mask or they go in the hallway and they take it down and they're walking around, we are not gonna permit people to stay in school. They will have to go home and they will have to do full wow. distance learning, have to do full distance learning because we cannot take the chance that somebody could get another person sick. So we're gonna be very, very strict on you're wearing a mask at all times. Uh, and that is a non-negotiable, teachers and staff will be doing the same thing, okay? Um, but we will have mask breaks. We haven't figured out exactly what that will look like, but we will have something in place before you walk in the school and teachers and staff will explain all that to you, all right? We will have signs and um, arrows all over the school as far as reminders about sanitizing, washing hands, keeping distance. You cannot be in here without a mask on. Uh, we will have arrows on the floor directing traffic. Uh, we haven't, again, decided exactly how they're doing this, but there's the possibility, a strong possibility, that we will have, we will have uh, basically like elementary school, single file walking on, you know, 100 wing going one way and the uh, 100 wing going the other way, single file arrows, um, so that you are not congregating or gathering and possibly having six or seven kids all together um, and, and, and spreading the, the, the virus or spreading any kind of symptoms or whatever else, okay? That is, again, a requirement, uh, signage, uh, traffic um, being very, very uh, strict and monitored, 
All right. Moving on. Hold on one second. Yep. Sorry about that. I just want to point out, I just uh, was told that our student account, our account here maxes out at 100. So if you have friends that are trying to get in, please remind them or text them or whatever else that um, this is being recorded and I'll post it. And if I have to do another one, I'll do another one for those people that couldn't get it. Okay. So if you can help me out in that regard, because people might be uh, frantic. We're getting some phone calls in the main office. All right. Um, so uh, that's about signage. Um, you should understand that rooms are now drastically changed. We have to have um, chairs six feet apart. Um, so a regular classroom that might have, you know, 25, 30 chairs now may only have 11 or 14 or 12 or somewhere in that range, depending on how big that room is. I'm going to show you pictures at the end of what some of the spaces look like right now. Um, so you can just kind of get a, a feeling. Some of you may have already seen things already online. But, um, but uh, the, the classrooms are, are definitely different and it's a weird experience when you walk in and see it for the first time. Um, um, so here's what you also need to know. Just again, if you're concerned about safety in particular, but it's also following the rules, we have to sanitize pretty much anything that's touched by human hands or around human people. Doorknobs, desks, um, anything we touch has to be um, has to be sanitized in between use. So if you, we are running a regular schedule, you are gonna have a regular period one to period nine schedule, you're gonna be moving to class to class to class because at the high school level, we cannot group you and keep you all in the same room all day long and move teachers because you have different levels, you have different classes, honors classes and so forth and so on, electives and everything. So you will be moving from class to class. So we have to, as a school, wipe down every desk, every doorknob, every, um, uh, computer, every keyboard that's used on one period before the second period comes in. So there is the very strong likelihood that the period uh, changes, meaning uh, the changing times is going to be extended uh, to four or five minutes. So we have enough time for you to get where you need to go and also clean each room after it's been used. Um, so that's, uh, again, something new that you need to be aware of. Um, and we will also have a sanitizer as you enter the room, because obviously not all classrooms, uh, you know, besides science classes have sinks to wash your hands. Um, so every class will have a sanitizer. So you have the ability and you'll be encouraged to sanitize every time you walk into a room, sanitize and then go sit down into the, your assigned seat. Um, so sanitizing personally or in the classroom, plus we will have sanitizing um, uh, dispensers on the walls in the hallway, should you need them or, or want them as well. So they're all over the building, but they'll also be in every instructional space. So when you walk in, you can sanitize. Um, we will not be prevented uh, allowing any gatherings uh, before school when the buses come in and, and whatever else. You're not going to be able to hang out in large groups in the hallways and you know talk and things like that. We just can't do it by regulation. Um, it's sa same goes for the cafeteria, study hall, and so forth and so on. And again, I'll show you pictures, but all the tables in the cafeteria are now gone. It's all individual desks, just like a classroom. And then the gym, the, the south gym or the microwave gym has all chairs that is going to be solely used for lunch and for study hall or overflow, I should say. Um, and lunch is going to be drastically different. It's not going to be, you know, walking up and picking this and picking that. It's going to be grab and go because we cannot let people touching different things and things like that. All of this that I'm explaining to you are all requirements we have as a school district. It is not our choice. Uh, and we feel terrible that this is the experience that we will have. Um, uh, so no gatherings. Uh, the hallway uh, will be clear. There are no, there's no, I have a free period. I'm doing laps. You're going to be in a space. You're going to have to stay there in your chair for the most part. Uh, obviously, we're going to try to build in whatever ability we have for you to move around a little bit or not just be, you know, sitting in a chair every period every day. We'll do whatever we can. And, and I'm going to ask for suggestions or thoughts of things that might help your experience at the end. But um, Teachers are not going to be letting you out um, for anything, you know, you got to go here, you got to go there. Obviously, bathroom is the only thing that will be allowed. Um, please understand also, it's very likely that we're going to be shutting down some bathrooms because we're only allowed one person in the bathroom at a time, and it has to be monitored, and we have to make sure people who are walking in the hall 
are using wearing masks and going in the bathroom to use the bathroom and then returning to class. Um, so we may be shutting down some bathrooms to be able to monitor and uh, secure bathrooms better. Um, we have the nurse's office as well and things like that. So if I'm in class during period three and I have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the class for whatever reason, you're going to go outside. There's going to be a supervisor, a monitor, or somebody in the hallway who's going to acknowledge you and they're going to see that you have your mask on. They're going to either escort you down to the, the, the bathrooms that are open and you're going to use the bathroom and then return. Um, so that's kind of how it is. There may be time for you to go to the bathroom in between classes, but again, we are extending periods uh, in between periods because of that reason, but you're going to only be allowed to go in one at a time with somebody monitoring that bathroom. Um, so that could be a little bit of a jam up. So we're going to ask all students to try to be, you know, um, you know, bathroom only, not I just want to go get a break and hang out in the bathroom type of a deal. Uh, we're going to need you to be very diligent in that. I just got to go to the bathroom to go to the bathroom and I'm going to go back to class afterwards. All right. Um, um, we've had to shut down um, the majority of the water fountains except for the ones that have that fill the bottle um, uh, it's because we can't have people leaning over and um, you know slurping out of a slurping out of a water bottle um, uh, a water fountain okay. uh, there will be no visitors so parents uh, or any other visitors are not going to be allowed in the school if you have to go home for a dentist appointment or you're feeling sick or something like that Parents are going to wait outside the building. You're going to be escorted to the um, outside, and then the parent would take you home. Um, I told you about sanitizers and hand washing as much as possible uh, in the availability of sinks. So you're aware, just it's a little, a little, little change from probably what's out there in general um, information is everything's got to be six feet apart as far as your chairs in, in your rooms, um, except for physical education class and music. Physical education and music have to be 12 feet apart, okay? So if I'm in band or chorus, we are setting up large spaces that everybody's going to be 12 feet apart. So we have not figured out specifically all the uh, specifics of the um, dynamics of this, but there's the possibility that music, band and or chorus, could be in the gym, uh, spaced out 12 feet apart, could be in the auditorium, could be in the LGI, could be outside on the turf field, almost like a marching band type of environment. Um, it could be in any of those spaces, all right? Uh, and while I'm on the, the topic of music, although I know not all of you are in the music program, um, you know, lessons could be virtual. We're not going to pull students, for the most part, out of in, uh, classes to take, um, to take uh, music lessons because obviously hybrid model, if you're choosing that, will be only two days in school. So we're gonna be taking you out of the study hall or lunch if you're willing. And then we are also going to probably have some kind of virtual lessons. And we will have small group lessons for those that might have lunch or study hall together. Um, so it's gonna be interesting. We're just gonna to have to figure it out when we figure out all schedules and things like that. But I just want you to be aware of that. For phys ed, it is still gonna be required. Okay, you're gonna still have to take physical education when you're in live in class. Um, you do need to know that um, phys ed lockers are no longer going to be used, so you're not going to change for phys ed. Again, another requirement of the CDC and the, the restrictions we've been given. And um, lockers in the hallway also cannot be used because obviously kids are touching, hands are on it, and things like that. So that is a requirement. So we're going to have to plan, and I've already spoke to the teachers about this, about textbooks and what you're carrying. Obviously, you're gonna to have to carry backpacks more often than maybe some of you ever have, um, but we're gonna to have to work through that of how, what that's going to look like as far as not being able to use my locker to you know, carry my books or my jacket or things like that. So uh, hopefully we have some good weather early on and we don't need tickets. Hopefully we um, you know, work out a system where you're not carrying a lot of uh, textbooks and things like that. So just be prepared as well. Um, there is no sharing of supplies, so whether it's an art class uh, or uh, family consumer science and things like that, it's going to look drastically different from what we're used to. So we cannot, you know, handle markers back and forth or textbooks back and forth or things like that. These are all things we're going to work with visual teachers in classes. Um, if, um, so here's kind of the uh, very 
interesting part of this. Um, again, I talked to you about arriving to school and don't come to school if you're feeling under the weather or anything like that. It is, it is hugely important that you are all honest with us about feeling sick or not feeling good or whatever else. Obviously, over the course of a day, you might not feel good for any other number of reasons, but not related to COVID. All right, we're not gonna take any chances. We're gonna take you home and I'm gonna show you on the website um, all of these specifics about if I'm not feeling well and returning to school and if, do I have to get checked for COVID and all that type of stuff. That's all on the website. I'm gonna show you where it is before we leave today. Um, but, but just understand that you need to be honest. You need to be careful. We don't want people here if you're not feeling well. The great part about what we're doing is that there's always an online version of anything you're gonna miss academically all right so um so just be patient with it but understand that you don't need to worry um about okay i'm going to miss this i'm going to miss that we're going to have an online version so that helps it's not perfect it's not you know what we want but we definitely want people to be careful about being in school when you're sick all right um but i'll go into the symptoms and the covid stuff in a little bit later all right if you're not feeling well or somebody exhibits any signs of COVID, a student in particular, we're gonna have an isolation room, which is actually gonna be the smiles room across from uh, the main office. That's gonna be where kind of people will stay if they're not feeling well, they're gonna be masked up and things like that uh, until the parent is here to pick them up and they're gonna es get escorted out, okay? You should also know, um, you know, there, it's very interesting, and I'm gonna get into the next part, which is really instruction, which again, some of you already know, but um, we are using every space available in the school for the possibility of instruction. I've already mentioned the, the, the gym, or at least part of the gym, the area on, on um, periods could be used for instruction, the LGI, the auditorium, um, the music room, the library, uh, the courtyard, uh, even the big courtyard with the big globe in it, in between the one and 200 wings, that may be on nice weather days, a chance and an opportunity that teachers may take you outside because again, we understand how restricted this is, how terrible it is in some regards, and we do want to give you some opportunities when we can to be outside and feel a little bit of normalcy. Uh, we may also, I'm playing with this and it will depend upon supervision and whatever else is during we may have almost like middle school recess where we can go out on the turf and at least get some sun or do something like that. So I'm looking at every opportunity I can to make things somewhat normal wherever I can, okay? All right, so moving on into instruction, all right? If you don't know already, if you're in the hybrid choice of instruction, you're coming to school two days a week, Monday and Tuesday or Thursday and Friday. All right, Wednesday, everybody is virtual right now. All right, if you are Monday to Tuesday, you are last name A to L. Anybody last name A to L is Monday and Tuesday. Anybody M to Z is Thursday and Friday. And again, Wednesday is a virtual day for everyone. The reason we've done this is about cross-contamination. Keeping the same kids in on Monday and Tuesday is a little bit of a reduction of chances of germs being spread and cross-contamination, okay? It's not perfect, but it's a little bit of a, a help. Wednesday, school is closed, so we can do a deep clean in all instructional spaces, okay? And during that time, um, teachers are going to be working on um, uh, virtual lesson plans and also content entire classes now who have been broken up they're going to be uh, contacting all of you in your class together virtual manner okay so that's how it will kind of look so now if i'm a to l on monday and tuesday the students m to z are virtual on monday and tuesday so what we are working on which is not perfect yet and it's not all figured out yet is Monday and Tuesday, if I, my last name is A and I'm in school, the virtual instruction that will be sent for the day for your entire schedule will match what, as much as possible, what's going on in the classroom that day live, okay? So it's not gonna look necessarily like it looked 
in the spring when we were just trying to get you guys through this and be as patient and flexible as possible, you're going to have real class information, instructions, lessons that's going to in some way, shape or form match the instruction that's happening live for the day or the week because there's some other ways teachers can work uh, in their, in their uh, delivering of information that over the course of the entire week, all the kids, whether you're virtual or in person are getting the same instruction, okay? So there's gonna be a higher expectation for when I'm not in school on my cohort day, I'm getting instruction, I'm doing that. Now we do understand that you may not necessarily follow your schedule like I'm up at 7.30 in the morning and I'm going period one, period two, period three. We'd love for you to do that, okay? And if you're gonna do that, it's great. It gives you a routine, it gives you kind of normalcy, that's fine. But we also understand that some of you may be watching your brothers or sisters, maybe not have access to a computer, um, maybe whatever. You, for whatever reason, your schedule doesn't work and you may have to do your work in the afternoon. So we're accounting for that. Again, all this stuff is being worked out, so I'm not going to give you specifics yet. But please understand, you're going to have expectations Monday and Tuesday to do online work if you're not in school that day. Okay? We are calling the Monday, Tuesday, Ada. A L uh, group, the red cohort, you are red. And we are calling the white cohort is the Thursday, Friday, M to Z. Again, everybody on Wednesday is getting all the same instruction online only. Teachers are not in the building. They're gonna, they're gonna work on their lessons that are virtual. So they're better lessons virtual. And they're going to um, contact you, you know, in your classes um, virtually as an entire group virtually, okay? One little kind of interesting piece about this uh, model is if I'm in an AB class, okay, like phys ed that meets every other day, that is a little snafu that we're going to figure, we figured out, but it's going to, and it's going to take a little time to get used to. So if I'm every other day class, like a health that's every other day or a phys ed or a lab or whatever else, if Monday's an A day, I might be in phys ed. Tuesday, I might be live. If I'm a red cohort, Tuesday, I might be in science lab, okay? Wednesday should technically be an A day, so I might be in phys ed again. So you'll get phys ed work or any work if you're in an A, B class on Wednesday, that's a little different because if I'm in a regular English class and I'm in the red cohort, I'm in class Monday and Tuesday, but not in an every other day class. So don't get confused by it. It's, it's just the A, B schedule that we've always done and we're gonna follow it with Wednesday being a virtual day for A, B classes that meet every other day, okay? So just, again, don't panic about that. It's a little confusing to explain verbally, but it's really no different than what we've done uh, with A, B classes throughout, okay? Um, you should know, how is this all gonna work? How is it, we're gonna figure this all out? All of our periods are gonna be reduced a few minutes each. So we're not gonna have the regular 41, 42 minutes, I don't even know off the top of my head, um, periods. We're gonna reduce each by a few minutes. And um, that's gonna give us some time, again, I told you extra time in between classes to change. And you're gonna get out of school earlier. Again, we're still working out the time frame. So I, I'll say maybe 1.30 or 1.40 or something like that. The reason we have to do that is we are required by as a school to um, contact every student every day, make sure every student attendance is taken and, and make contact. So obviously if I'm in the red cohort on Monday and Tuesday and I'm in school, I'm with my teachers, okay? My, the white cohort is not. The teacher at the end of the day has to make contact and make sure those students, you know, logged into Google Classroom, completed an assignment, checked in, whatever else, and also have time for the teachers to be, have office hours, if you recall from uh, the spring, where if you're a white cohort and you've got an assignment in um, social studies, but you didn't really understand it, I'm gonna contact my social studies teacher by appointment and I'm gonna ask the question and they're gonna be available to me. So we put basically a 45 minute period, which is a combination of the shortened periods and 10th period as the virtual time frame where teachers are gonna work with the people that were online for the day. Um, so that's, that's how it's gonna work. It, it's not, again, not absolute because some kids are gonna do their work in the afternoon. Um, and um, 
you know, sometimes, uh, you know, a student may not have a question and the teacher um, may be working with one class and not another. So th things are going to kind of evolve as we go through the virtual, but we're going to have time, def uh, dedicated time during that period where teachers are going to be working with the online students. It doesn't mean a teacher isn't contacting you during the day, maybe on their prep period or their professional period or even during their lunch or even before school or even in the afternoon. That's going to be up to individual teachers and how they operate, but we will have dedicated time for you at the end of the school day should you need it. But everybody's got to check in and basically take attendance every day. So we are working on like a Google uh, form that the online kids will uh, fill out, which will take their attendance for the day in their individual classes when they are virtual. So again, please don't get confused with a lot of this. We're gonna be spending the first couple of weeks of school, I'm sure, really working on the safety protocols that I went over earlier and also figuring out all this stuff as far as how it works and how it operates and whatever else. That's gonna take some time and that's what the first week or so is gonna be regardless. Um, so don't get confused. And um, I am also available if anybody wants to meet personally, call personally, come in personally with social distancing and masks on to, you know, let me walk you through it if you need it. All right. Um, okay, so moving on. Uh, so like I kind of insinuated, online work is going to be for lack of a better word, you know, more, more robust, okay? Um, there's gonna be expectations, it's gonna be regular grading because you are in school and the teachers are gonna work with you when you are actually in school, if you chose the hybrid model, they're going to, you know, kind of keep you motivated of what you're supposed to be doing online and, and things like that and checking in and all that type of stuff. Um, so it's, you know, that's, you're gonna have FaceTime with teachers and all that, okay? Um, I should point out that when, we, and this is more of a safety issue, but I, I wrote it in this area, when we have the bells ringing, we're not gonna let kids just fly out of the room and you know, as a mass group, you know, who, who can get out the door first, we're, we're gonna have to set, you know, let you go out basically row by row so we can walk pretty much in you know, single file and keep from uh, gathering in that process. All right, um, okay, so what you should know, and some of you may be, may be um, may have chosen this, and some of you may choose to cho cho choose this as we move forward. Some students are not comfortable coming in at all right now for safety purposes or whatever reason. They are saying, I don't really feel comfortable coming in two days a week. So that is what we call full-time distance learner, all right? Nothing changes except that you're not coming in. You're gonna still be in your same classes. You're still gonna get that online work that comes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay, that is why it's important for us to figure out as a staff that the instruction every day online pretty much matches what we're doing in person because there are people that aren't coming in, you know, at all. You know, it's no different than somebody who might have an injury and they're out of school for two weeks or have mono or whatever else. In the past, we sent tutors or sent work home. Now everything's online which there is one advantage is if I'm a red cohort coming in on Monday and Tuesday, all right, I might be legitimately sick or maybe I sprained my ankle or something on Tuesday and I'm not coming into school, I have that online version that's already there. So I'm not gonna miss class, you know, basically. I can still do my online work. So that's an advantage of this. It's not ideal, but it's an advantage. Um, you should know that we have anywhere between right now 20 to 25 kids per grade, 9, 10, 11, 12, who are going full-time distance learning. And they're gonna just go online, similar to like what we did in the spring. Um, that's quite a few kids. So now if you take, I'm just gonna use round numbers, your grade has 100 kids in it, and theoretically we're splitting you up by alphabet, so theoretically it's 50 and 50, and then from that group, only 10 each, and again, this is just estimates, 10 each are not coming in because they're doing full distance learning. We may only have 40 kids per grade or somewhere thereabouts in, in school on any given period. So you may have a situation where you're in, in person and you may have 15 kids in your class, which may not fit into a regular classroom that you normally go to. So it may be in the LGI, or you may have four kids in the class. So the good thing again with shortened periods by a few period, uh, shortened periods by a few minutes, 
I may have only four, six, 10 kids in a class, it is much easier for me to start instruction and get some real good dialogue or get, get some real good work with a smaller class in school. So again, a slight advantage or an optimistic view I'm gonna give you about having these smaller classrooms and getting some, you know, getting into the, the instruction quicker and, and in, a, in a better way, all right? Um, what else? Uh, I talked to you about the logistics of courses. Um, science labs are more than are almost definitely, if not well, they are pretty much definitely um, going to be virtual. Um, so that again helps online, and it also helps in in school because we can't be touching different uh, supplies and things like that. Um, I talked about art and music and phys ed. Phys ed is, at least to start school, is not going to be team sports and things like that. It's going to be more, again, no changing. It could be if nice weather, we're going to be outside. We might be on the turf field or the track or wherever else doing more personal fitness type of stuff, whether it's yoga or walking or, you know, some type of strength exercise, you know, individually, person by person, 12 feet apart, you know, that type of environment to start. Uh, same with technology and things like that. We're going to be very, very careful about sharing equipment, sanitizing equipment, and so forth and so on. Okay, back to music. We're going to, again, not use lockers. So we're going to store instruments in, the, in a locked auditorium. We're going to pretty much give name plates for every piece of equipment. And, you know, your, your equipment's going to go on a name, you know, like a piece of paper that's taped to the floor or the stage. And that way, nobody touches it. You're the only one that touches it and you know where it is. Um, to start school, we have no clubs and right now no sports. Sports is still up in the air. They sang September 21st was a goal to start the fall season, which has been modified. Um, we have not heard anything yet. We are not allowed to do any, you know, uh, uh, training uh, with coaches right now because of the rules and the regulations. My gut feeling is, and this is, I have no inside information, is that we will not start sports September 21st because there's just too much else that's going on and too many unknowns. That's just my gut feeling. I'm hopeful it will happen because that will give us some normalcy. But um, right now, no clubs and no um, sports to start school. That does not mean after two weeks, we reevaluate and say, okay, we can do some of these clubs online. We can do some of these clubs in person or whatever else. Right now, after ninth period, everybody's leaving, going home, whether it's on the bus, parent pickup, or if you're a student driver or a walker, you're going home. And then that starts that chunk of time where it's virtual for the teachers um, and they're working with the students that are not in school for the day. Um, with all this being said, and I know this is overwhelming and I feel terrible, terrible, terrible trying to walk you through this. And I can only imagine, because none of you are on video, that you're all like, oh my God, this is like, this is terrible. I get it. I believe me, I get it and I understand. We are going to have support staff here for anybody who needs it. Our mental health team, our counselors, myself, um, whoever, we need to get to support you in any way, shape, or form with dealing with this. Uh, abnormal environment, you just need to ask. You need to reach out, reach out to me, email, call, stop in, whatever we need to do, we will set up as much support as we need for whatever your needs are. That, you know, This is a time that we all have to gather together, and not, not literally, we have to gather together and take care of each other. Uh, and I, I commit that to you moving forward. I wanna stop for one second, just because I want you to know, maybe some of you already know, but Mr. Caswell is retired. Uh, he's not coming back. He's actually finishing up this week, all right? Um, and I just wanna tell you right now, uh, I am not the principal. I am taking care of things for now until we make a decision as a district of who's gonna be the principal. Um, so right now, in essence, at the end of this week or even this week, and the, after this week, I'm gonna be the point person for everybody. So again, reach out to me for anything you need. Once we determine who the next principal is, I will let you know, we will let you know and all that type of stuff. I also should let you know that Ms. Thompson has decided to retire in the math department um, and we were working on replacement for that position as well. Okay, so you should know that. Um, uh, I want you to know that because it in impacts some of you. Mr. Caswell is still here, so feel free to email him uh, the next few days. He is here the, next, the rest of the week if you wanna reach out to him in any way, shape or form, okay? 
Um, I talked about daily attendance. It is imperative, especially when you are virtual, whether it's uh, the hybrid model or full-time virtual, you are going to have to check in every day with every class, otherwise it's considered an absence, okay? And that's something we're gonna stress as we go forward. Um, please understand, keep where, you know, your student emails, uh, Senator Merch's uh, address, that is gonna be a very big portion of communication between now and the start of school and then throughout school. Um, so please, you know, put that on your phone, uh, check it all the time. I'm going to communicate as much as possible. I'm probably gonna over communicate uh, as I'm, you know, leading the ship for the next however long. Um, so please continue to keep using your email, all right? All right, some more specifics and I'm, I'm almost done. So I appreciate your, your patience. Um, schedules are coming out on this Friday, the 21st, they'll be posted. Mr. Caswell is sending out a Connect Ed and it's gonna be posted on the website and they're gonna be, be available on the 21st. It's a very important thing for everybody here and pay attention to because this is gonna be a, a non-negotiable, all right? Counselors are going to be here and this is gonna come out in the message that goes out to you and your parents. Counselors are gonna be here on August uh, 29th, uh, 20, I'm sorry, 27th which is Thursday of next week, 28th, which is the Friday of next week, and the 31st, which is the Monday following. Three days, August 27th, 28th, and 31st. It is imperative that you look at your schedule, are comfortable with your schedule, and if you're not, on those three days, you're gonna make an appointment, and all this information is gonna go out to you, you're gonna make an appointment with Ms. Um, Sherman in the, in the um, guidance office, and she's going to set up appointments if you need to change your schedule, okay? You're gonna change your schedule. It's gonna be a phone appointment only, a, you know, a phone call. You're not gonna come in. We're not gonna meet in person. You're gonna make an appointment to speak to your counselor one-on-one, -on -one, okay? And make whatever changes are needed. After the 31st, okay, very, very important. After the 31st, schedule changes are no longer going to be accepted. Okay, so you need to look at what you got. You need to be sure, and I'm gonna explain why. And when I say they're not, no longer gonna be accepted, they will be accepted on a case-by-case -case basis based on room availability, okay? As I kind of explained so far, our, our rooms have been minimized. We have less people in a room uh, because of six foot distancing with desks. I have to wait. I've already done it right now with what the schedule looks right now. I've split the thing into A to L and M to Z. I looked at how many kids are in each class. I subtracted all the full-time distance learners and said, okay, now I have on period one English, I have in the red cohort on Monday, Tuesday, I have nine kids. I can fit them in the classroom. On Thursday, Friday, I have 14 kids can't fit them in that classroom, that classroom has to use the LGI. So I had, I've done that already right now. Now I gotta wait, because I really wanna accommodate any changes you need to your schedule. I have to wait until the changes are done, then I gotta redo all that work of everybody's schedule, nine to 12, look at every roster, split it up A to L, M to Z, subtract any more or all the people who are distance learning, and then look at each particular classroom and say, this classroom can fit 14 kids, I can do it on a red day or a white day, or I can't do it. So the reason I have to restrict changes after the 31st is I only have eight days to figure out where everybody's gonna go, and I can't let one room that fits turn into six more kids that I don't fit, because it, it literally is an incredibly difficult job I got to do to get that done, all right? Now, I did preface what I said with if there's room availability. So now you may go to your guidance counselor after the 31st, September 3rd, you like, oh, you know what? I really can't just do that class. You may go to your counselor and say, I'd really like to get into forensics period four. Your counselor is going to have to look at the schedule and say, okay, there's only seven kids in that class. Okay, there's only seven kids in that class. So, um, and there's 11 seats. I can do it, so we can grant it. So it's gonna be a case by case based on the course and where that room is. Now, I will go out of my way wherever I can if you, know, you wanna switch it and there's no seats and maybe I have a large 
area to go to. Like I can move the higher, higher class, but it's a big job for me to do. So I'm gonna, we're gonna be pretty strict. But again, because this is such an abnormal situation, I wanna do whatever I can to make any of your lives simpler. I will try everything I can. We will do everything we can, but I can't promise you. So again, schedules come out this Friday, the 21st at noon. Changes can be made by appointment with your counselor on the phone, August 27th, Thursday, August 28th, Friday, August 31st, Monday. After the 31st, no schedule changes unless it's a case-by-case -case, uh, basis, okay? Next thing, and I'm almost done. I, I, again, I appreciate it. Um, driving to school, seniors only. Class D license, you have to have a class D license. A, uh, a Connect Ed is going out today, I believe, or if not, one of these days this week by Mr. Caswell. He just set it up today um, with getting a school uh, parking permit, all right? You need to have a class D license. You need to um, fill out the form that's gonna be posted online. You gotta come into, there's gonna be a date, I think it's the 31st, where, where seniors can come in to get a parking pass and you gotta follow all the rooms with Mrs. Slifstein in the main office, okay? Make sure you wear your mask when you come in and things like that, okay? Class D license only, all right? No exceptions. That is, a, a, we'll be on the 31st and all that information is coming for you. Now, there may be some people on, there may be some people on this call who were in driver's ed in the spring that cut, cut, cut short by COVID and they didn't finish driver's ed, therefore they, aren't able to get their senior license because they need driver's ed to get their seniors license, okay? What I can tell you right now is we are doing what we can. We're talking to the driver ed school and I'm getting in contact and have been trying to get in contact with the state to see if they'll make any exceptions for those kids to you know, grandfather you in or something like that. I cannot promise at any way, shape or form that that's gonna happen, all right? But I'm trying, and if we can figure something out, we'll figure it out. So for anybody who was taking driver's ed that got cut short, please understand that I'm working behind the scenes to see if there's anything we can do. You're not allowed to drive to school with a junior license. We've confirmed that legally. We cannot allow it legally uh, unless they make an exception, which we're also reaching out to lawmakers and things like that to say, can you make an exception for that? So more to come on that for anybody that that applies to. Um, but right now, senior license only, um, and that will be, I think, the 31st. Information will be out shortly on that. Um, I don't know if I mentioned senior courtyard, but senior courtyard will be an instructional space. We will still allow uh, social distancing if we have supervision, if that's a hangout place during lunch, like we have in the past. Again, I'll go above and beyond to do whatever I can to make sure we do things if we can do them. But again, I cannot promise based on having supervisors that can make sure kids are staying masked and staying socially distanced and things like that. Plus we are using it as an instructional space. I literally, well maybe not right yet, but outside my window, there will be chairs set up like a regular classroom out there just so we can get some sunlight if there's a chance a teacher wants to teach out there, okay? Um, for those of you who are ninth graders, um, I'm still working on whether we're gonna do a ninth grade orientation or whether I'm gonna do something virtual or not. Um, so um, that's something we're working on uh, in the next day or so, whatever else. Um, I talked about grab and go lunching, lunch, um, which will be the case for anybody who came late. Lunch will be grab and go if you're gonna get something. I, I strongly suggest you bring your own lunch just because I think it will be easier or whatever else. But if you do need the cafeteria, there'll be a grab and go and you'll be sitting in regular seats either in the cafeteria or the, or the South gym. Um, talked about the AB schedule. So let me just show you before I open it up to anybody who has questions. And again, if you're not comfortable uh, asking a question in line and in, uh, in live in front of your, um, your peers, that's fine. You can email me separately. You can call me separately or whatever else, but I will open it up for questions, clarifications, and even more important, I'll open it up for ideas or thought processes. Okay. I have gotten, before I show the photos, I have gotten, um, you know, a few people that have reached out to me saying, well, well, can we do it this way? Can we do, um, you know, every other day, different kids come in, or um, can I switch my cohort or whatever else? We cannot do this. The way we have it is the best way to keep you safe. It is not ideal because you may have a friend who's in a different cohort, your best friend or whatever else. Um, it's not ideal, um, but it is the safest way 
to follow the rules that we're expected to follow as a school district, okay? So right now we can, as I explained just short time ago about how tight classrooms will be, I cannot, the, the standard rule right now is you can't change cohorts, all right? Not because this reason or that reason or whatever else. Now, there are, there is, oh, actually I gotta get to one thing. There are some exceptions and I'm gonna, well, there's one exception right now. BOCES students, students that go to BOCES in the afternoon to do a trade, okay, they all get on the same bus. So if you're a BOCES student here, if you've been approved and are joining a BOCES program, all the BOCES students, regardless of last name, are going to be in the same cohort because they have to get on a bus to go to BOCES every day because they still have a program at BOCES. It's reduced. It's half, you know, 50% of the maximum because of COVID. They have to get on a bus daily to go there. So I have to put them in one cohort, red or white, as a group so that they can go on a bus daily to, to there. So there's an example where one, the only example I have that is a cohort change, all right? Now, with that being said, once I figure out all the dynamics of how big a classroom is and how many kids can fit in a classroom after you've done all your schedule changes, there may be a need. I might find out, oh my God, like I can't run the red cohort. I don't have enough space. I may have to change some kids or do something. I doubt it, but again, I am willing to look at every option to make any of you comfortable. I don't want to promise anybody anything. I don't want to guarantee anything, um, but I will work as hard as I can to make anybody even a little bit more comfortable if I can while following the rules. Okay. Um, okay, so let me just show you, I'm going to screen share here and then I'll take questions or comments if you have any. All right. So, and just be patient with me. So this is what, and this picture is a little skewed, but this is what a classroom looks like. All right. Um, hold on. Wait, hold on one second. Hold on, I'm sorry. Oh, where go? I'm missing. All right, let me, one second, hold on. So this is what a classroom looks like. I think this is a 100 wing classroom. This is what the cafeteria looks like. Another class, oh, that's the same picture, I'm sorry. This is another classroom in the 100 wing. This is the um, uh, 306 uh, with Ms. Woodworth. So you should see here, although you see chairs here, People will be seated at the computers, uh, I think every third chair or every fourth chair, and then we put some chairs in the middle um, to allow additional kids to sit if we need it. And not everything's set up. This is an art room. We no longer could use the tables because you wouldn't be six feet apart. And not everything's set up and not everything's cleaned up. Another art room. This is the gym that would be for cafeteria or study hall. And this is a science lab. So looking at the science lab, um, again, these big tables help us in some regards because there'll be one student at each corner of the tables. We also have, if you look in the back, we have the ability to put like one regular chair, uh, one desk back here to add a person and things like that. So that's kind of what that looks like. All right. And then if you go to, Hold on, I'm sorry. So if you go to the website, you'll see district reopening information. And if you go to that, you'll see um, here, Santa Maritza's 
district COVID-19 testing plan. This talks about all the things, a lot of the things I spoke about and some in more detail, specifically things such as when somebody's feeling ill and we have to send them home and how they are, um, how, how we are following up to make sure that they have been tested and they're not coming to back to school with COVID. And then the other one, the tracing plan, is talks about how we, if somebody, God forbid, does contract COVID, how we go back in time, which is again, why we've set up school the way we set up, how we go back in time uh, to find out who they've had contact with in school. Now, the unfortunate thing that we cannot control is what you guys do outside of school. So if you're hanging out without masks and with your friends or playing on a sport team or whatever else, um, we can't control that um, and we can't uh, monitor that. We can only do what we can do in the school, all right? So that is all I have at this point. Um, at this time, feel free, you can put your video on, you could not, just put your audio on, um, ask a question, give a suggestion. Um, again, if you're not comfortable, you can reach out to me personally uh, and, and I'll, uh, okay? So whoever's up, go ahead. Um, so um, I'm Robert Fahey, and um, I would just like to say that I was, um, here, let me get my microphone closer to me. Yeah, but, I'm having um, a little trouble hearing you. Okay, is this any better? A little bit. Okay, um, hearing all of this really put me at rest, because I- Hold on, is this any that's, better at that's all? That's better, there we go. Okay, great, must have had something else hooked up, but um, I remember thinking, oh, kids might not be wearing masks, like they might have like um, a medical reason for not wearing a mask. But um, hearing all this made me think, yeah, this district is really going in the right direction and taking this seriously as they sh as sorry as seriously as they should. Uh huh. And um, for anyone who is listening, please wear a mask yeah well it's going to be non-negotiable in school it's, it's, you know, and please i think what you're saying is if you're outside keep doing it and uh you know on your regular day when you're not in school and through the rest of the summer um and listen i understand there are some there are many people you know even myself where you know i think about what's happening you know people are out at the beach people are hanging out whatever else our numbers aren't going up and all that type of stuff. So maybe this is all blown out of proportion. Sometimes I feel that way, I gotta be honest. But what we haven't experienced is, we have not experienced, you know, two or 300 kids, or if you include the middle school, four or 500 kids in a, a closed environment as the fall comes on with adults in there. Nobody's done that. Like people will say, well, hey, listen, what about the grocery store and the mall and Lowe's and Home Depot and things like that? Yeah, people, walking around, people, whatever else, but they're not confined, you know, 35, 40 minutes at a time in a classroom, in an, you know, in the school building, you know, uh, all at the same time. This is a first time. So we don't know, I hope to God that, you know, this doesn't blow up and nothing bad happens and we can just get back into school full time. But right now we have to follow the instructions and the law. That's why we did everything that we're doing, and we have to make sure we do everything we can to prevent something from happening, and hopefully nothing does, and you know, by October or middle October, we're back in school. That would be the wonderful best case scenario, but we have to be prepared no matter what, which is why our hybrid version can automatically go into a full uh, distance learning program just because we already have some people that are choosing to do distance learning right now anyway. Um, so we can go from hybrid to fully at home or fully back in school because we kept our master schedule in place. We kept periods in place. Everything transitioned from one to the other without an issue. I do want to point out, I forgot this, if you are choosing distance learning fully, okay, there's one stipulation that we're going to have because we need to, and you'll understand why when I say. So if I chose to be home full time, we're not allowing any of those students in until the end of the first marking period if they choose to come back. And the reason is we have to account for space, like I explained earlier about classroom and how tight they are. So we have to be able to, have, be able to plan and give ourselves some time if 10 people are coming back to make sure we don't have to shuffle classrooms and things like that. So we're gonna require anybody who chooses distance learning 
to stay the whole first marking period. If they want to come back after the first marking period, they're going to give us notice and we're going to make it work. And then if they start the second marking period and God forbid we're still in this, they're going to have to wait to the end of the second marking period and on and on and on. Hopefully we don't have to deal with it. Hopefully three weeks into this, we've done a great job and everybody's following the rules and you guys are all trained to do the right thing. And, you know, numbers cease to exist and the heavens are upon us and, you know, we are back in school. I'd love it. Um, but we have to be prepared for whatever direction this goes. So thank you. Any next um, questions? Mr. Thode. What's up, buddy? Hey, um, so I heard you said something about like not having clubs and stuff. Mm -hmm. How are you, like, do you think that we'd be able to have a drama club still like by mid-year? Would we so, be able to again, perform? Yep, perfect question. Our intention is not to not have stuff for you to do. Uh, the yeah. is, as you've heard, if you've been here for the whole time, our, our, our reopening, getting everybody trained and making sure everything's working, doing things the right way is going to be such a monumental job. Um, get everybody trained to living this different life, especially all of you who are, are living your summer lives for the most part. And now you're going to basically be in, I joke a little bit, but like military school. Um, so, so we need to get, we, we need to make the schools operating properly to start. Um, so we're hoping that you know, maybe in the, after the first couple of weeks when everybody's used to this and we've got everything arranged, because listen, I want to make sure everybody understands. I'm sure there are things that we're thinking about or unintended consequences or something we're going to have to adjust. So we're going to have to be able to do that and, and, and put our efforts into that. Right now, our goal is to get you back in school as much as we can and to make sure your online stuff is, you know, up to par. You know, what you're getting at home when you're not in school is up to par. So that, that's our focus. So adding, letting kids you know, walk around to different clubs at the end of school or not having virtual ones. Right now, we've got to focus on the task at hand. And then hopefully, we'll move into some virtual clubs. And then hopefully, we'll be able to move into, um, you know, in, into real life, if, if you want to call it that. And, and we'll be back. So the good thing, at least for drama club, is you have some time. And yeah, yeah. Get, we'll get there just like we get there with everything, every other club and sports as well. But that's great. Okay. All right? I have a yep. question. Yes. Um, well, it's kind of like a two-parter. Go ahead. First of all, I wanted to say thank you for everything that you're doing. I can't imagine how like completely drained your mind is. Right. Um, yeah. No, I haven't had vacation this summer. Uh, I'm so sorry about that. It's okay. It's worth it because, like I said, we're we're in this together, and uh, this is a time. I think this is going to be a wonderful time where we end up getting closer as a school and as a community because we're uh -huh. working on the same thing. So go ahead. I'm sorry to cut you off. All right. No, you're good. So. Um, for the Thursday, Friday, um, mm -hmm. is like, you know how you said the Wednesday is going to be treated as an A day. Is the Thursday going to be an A day or a B day? Um, where, where, uh, good question. And I would literally, before we have this meeting today, I was, uh, working with, uh, Ms. Redio down at the middle school to figure out what that's going to look like. More to come on that question. We're going to, you know, you know, I don't know if you've seen, you know, if you recall seeing whatever else, like we, we print out the calendar schedule and has A, B, day, A, B, A, B, A, B. We're going to oh, yeah. make sure you have that information ahead of time. So don't, don't worry about that. We're figuring out how that's going to look. Okay. And All then right? my other question is yeah. um, for those that are on virtual for Monday and Tuesday. Yep. Um, is there going to be like a little page on the school website that shows like where to get your teacher's uh, website or So, classes? okay, perfect. We just talked about this literally at 11.45, Ms. Reggio and I, uh, Dr. Reggio and I. Um, so it's going to be similar to what we did when we had to go virtual in, in March, where we have, we're going to post a Google Classroom for you, depending on what class you're in and things like that. So that information, we're going to figure out a way that you'll have all that information so that when the first day of school happens, because you got to remember, the first week of school is going to be hectic, you know, like where am I, whatever. So we understand that, but we're going to have everything posted so that you'll be able to get on your classroom if you're virtual to start the school year. The good okay. thing is we start on a Tuesday. So only, you know, the red cohort is going to be in for one day and then everybody's going to be virtual, but we'll have that information to you ahead of time. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Who's next? Anybody? I have a question. Two questions. All right, hold on. Is, go ahead. Um, it, I have two questions actually. Yep. Um, yeah. So, for when yeah. we go back to school, mm -hmm. are we? Would it be possible to like 
bring our own computer like if we want to bring our own computer just to like stay safe and like not be right. touching so the we we are again this is an, and and i want to tell you guys believe it or not you probably believe it is every day we find five more things we have to figure out um this is something we have been talking about what we call byod bring your own device um there are we're looking into it i'm not going to promise that we can do it or whatever else but we're looking into it if there's a legal component of this i'm going to be very honest with you because you guys are all high schoolers is like what if i bring my mac in and i drop it and it breaks who's responsible for it you know so we are looking at the possibility of allowing that just because that way obviously you're not sharing computers because we are still going with how we did it before which is if you needed a chromebook you're going to be able to have a chromebook at home uh, we we dished out hundreds and hundreds of them but we also recognize that some people number one will be more comfortable with their own computer if it's possible and um, but we have to account for um, you know that type of thing so I can't promise you we're going to allow that but we are talking about that and you will know before the before you arrive Okay, thank you. And then my second question is for eighth graders at in March, we made our own schedules with Mr. Peppy. Yep. Is our schedule going to look anything like the way we made it or are they going to like Yeah, so so all of you, no matter what grade you are, when you did the class selection process, um, you know, what you 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 get what you have to have and then you get all <laughs> you get all the alternatives or all the things that you you'd like to have. Um, so when your schedule comes out on Friday, you'll see what you have. Um, it should line up pretty much except for, and this will be sent to you when you, when it, when the schedules are posted, you know, some classes we had to cancel because there weren't enough kids interested in them, like electives. Um, some things had to be canceled because of other reasons. Um, so that's why we have that class change on the 29th, the 28th, 29th, and 31st. So if, uh, whatever the dates are, 27, 28, and 31st. Um, so you should get what you asked for, for the most part, everybody, grades nine through 12, not just eighth graders that are gonna be ninth graders, because now you're a ninth grader. Um, but everybody should be working on what they, what, what they had or what they requested in the, in the spring. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I have a few questions um, about distance learning. Yep. Yes. Um, for any textbooks, what days would we have to go to the school to get right. like textbooks? So perfect. So yeah, that was another thing that just came up. So um, where we will have to figure out if you're on full distance learning, okay. And if you don't already know this, if you haven't already got a phone call, we had a survey out there that you know because we have to figure out who's taking the bus because we have to fit everybody on the bus. We have to figure out who's. Um, coming in hybrid, who's distance learning, we have to figure out everybody. We have to know like really specifically where everybody's gonna be so we can get things, we can't have any surprises. Um, so uh, so if you didn't do that survey or your parent didn't or guardian didn't do that survey, you need to, but we also have been literally calling home because we have a list of who hasn't done it. So our secretaries here have been calling home and, and doing the survey online to let us know. Um, so yes, um, Soraya, uh, the, um, we are looking at, uh, you know, we're going to give the list of everybody who's distance learning to the teachers. And if there's textbooks or that or anything that's um, uh, that is uh, needs to be brought home, um, that we'll, we'll probably have a pickup time where you can come to the high school and pick it up outside or just like we've done over the summer, you know, through the library exit or whatever else. Um, if there's something that you need that's tangible that has to go home, we're going to make an arrangement for any distance learner to come pick it up. Obviously, we're going to try, you know, to be green as possible and all the online version, online work, you know, as much as possible will be online. You'll be seeing and, and uh, you'll be, again, seeing drastically different online stuff this year than you did at the end of last year because we're going to have more time and the teachers have more time built into their schedules to create things. So you might see your teacher teaching live. You might hear your teacher almost like a podcast. You might uh, have a, a professional video, a YouTube video that's gonna match somewhat to some regard what's going on live. But anything that has to be picked up um, tangible, we will make arrangement for anybody who's a full-time distance learner. Okay, and also what happens if the laptop like stops working? How do you uh, So if you if get, you like, borrowed a laptop from us that stops working, obviously number one, we would we would trade it in and give you something that was working. Obviously, you know, th there's gonna be a need and an expectation from teachers, for teachers and for students to make sure we're communicating on a great much greater level um, this year. 
So, you know, teachers are going to have to give you all the expectations, especially when you're online, or, you know, whether you're full-time online or you're hybrid and you're only in two days um, of, of, you know, communication of what's needed. And if there's a problem, if I can't, you know, like I'm having trouble with my computer and I can't get my assignment done today, you're going to need to, as, as young adults, you're going to need to email the teacher and say, listen, my computer broke down. I need another day um, or something like that. So two parts to that question, and I'm not sure exactly, Soraya, which one it was kind of referring to, is if your computer breaks and you've borrowed one from the school, we'll fix it. And if your computer stops working or your internet stops working or something like that, and you can't complete your assignment, um, we're going to be flexible to some degree. We're not going to let people take advantage and say, oh, you know, it took me a week. Um, but we also would expect communication between the uh, student to the teacher saying, hey, something came up. I need you to do this. And if you ever, anybody has a problem or an issue, hi girls, um, if you have an issue, um, you can, you're going to be able to contact me specifically or your counselor or whoever to say, you know, listen, I'm, my teacher hasn't gotten back to me quick enough and I'm really anxious. Can you, can you help me out here? So uh, I'll offer that as well. And lastly, for um, labs for chemistry, yes. are there any specific apps that we need to get to uh, perform the labs? So, so again, I want, I want to treat you all like young adults. You know, teachers are not working right now. Um, in fact, it's just me, Mr. Caswell, secretaries and custodians. In fact, I, I've been moving desks uh, half the time I'm here to help the custodians because it's just this is a crazy job. So teachers aren't necessarily working, although I met with them virtually on Monday to go over the almost the exact stuff we're talking about now. And, uh, you know, they're they're panicking, too, because they want to, you know, want to give you the best uh, version of online stuff in, in particular. So they are we are literally at this point um, looking at purchasing even more online platforms for teachers. Um, and they're figuring out how they're going to deliver this instruction at a higher level. Um, so they're, every day I'm getting emails of like, I want this platform and that platform. That information, Soraya, will be shared with you when school starts with the individual teachers of individual classes saying, okay, this is what I need you to do. This is the app I need you to download. Obviously, nothing is going to be something you're going to have to pay for. Um, but all that specific class um, information will be uh, directed to you when school starts by that individual teacher. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. How you doing, Mr. Dodd? What's happening? Uh, I'm just curious, who is the AP uh, Cal teacher? Is it Mr. Abraham, Mrs. Uh, Mangonia? AP Calc. Because uh, Ms. Well, Thompson retired. So, okay, so Ms. Thompson's retired. We are literally, uh, on top of everything else that we're doing, um, we're literally hiring um, somebody else. So I don't know who it is. I can't say if Ms. Mangonia is going to move to that that class or we're bringing somebody in we're in the process of figuring out who will be teaching that class but i will tell you i can assure you that whoever we're getting to teach that class is going to be somebody who can teach the class well we're not going to shortchange. we're going to get the, the best candidate possible to fill that role okay and um when we bring our if we bring our own laptops in i'm guessing you're going to give us school wi-fi Yes, I mean, again, if that is something that we are able to permit, and I can't confirm that will be at this point, um, you, you will, you'll, get, you'll get access, correct. And then Ms. Thompson gave us like a, an assignment in yep. June, at the end of June. So yep. should I complete that or should I just- I would say yes. Comment? I would say yes, okay. just because I, I, you know, I don't want to change anything that you're doing. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's not going to hurt. So, um, you know, that's a, a very specific question, but I would say yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anybody else? Hi. Hi. All right. Hold on. Let's say Annabelle. Um, so I was just wondering if, um, if you get driven to school, can you take the bus home or is it just one or the other? Great question. Um, and I, I'm going to be honest with you. I really haven't thought about that one. So you got driven to school, but you need to take the bus home. We, we have to now, I'm writing that one down. Uh, we have to we have to look into that. Um, driven to school, awesome question. So I will uh, we'll we'll make sure we get to that. And sorry, okay. just so you know, I haven't shaved because I literally am just too tired to shave. What else, Annabelle? Anything else? Uh, no, that was it. Thank you. Okay, I'll look into that. And make sure we get that information out. And if I have to have another, like I said, if I have to have another Zoom for anybody who couldn't fit on this one or um, do another one just to follow up on any more changes between now and start school, I'll let you guys all know. Anybody else? Hey, Mr. 
Hey, Mr. Thos. Hey, Mr. Thos. Oh. What's happening? Oh. Um, what are you doing about attendance? What's going on with attendance? So, I, as I said before, you know, obviously, if you're in class, you're going to be getting attendance like normal. When you're in school, you have your attendance taken every day and all that type of stuff. Um, if you're online, like I said, we are going to have something in place online that every student and the teachers are going to be working with you individually on this. They're going to give you expectations. We may even have like a Google form that you're going to you know, kind of uh, uh, acknowledge about the expectations. Basically, every day you're going to need to. Now, I'm not saying every day your teacher is going to have this giant assignment. Uh, it's going to match whatever was going on in the class. So let I'll just use an example. If in a class uh, we were reading a passage from Romeo and Juliet. That would be your assignment at home, okay? So you will be required at some point during the day. So let's say I'm just going to use a very specific example so you guys get used to the terminology. If I, it's a red day, Monday or Tuesday, and I'm a white cohort student, so I'm home on virtual, I'm going to have to go through all my Google Classrooms for all my classes that I have on Monday, and I'm going to have to check in maybe do an assignment, maybe do a reading, maybe complete a, you know, an exercise, maybe watch a video, maybe take notes. I don't know. It's going to be very specific to the class and the teacher. And there's going to be a, some type of way that that's going to count as your attendance. Like I said, we may have a separate Google form that you fill in saying, oh, he checked in, you know, and that's going to be regular attendance. So online is going to be regular attendance, just like in person. Well, another thing is, if you say you just fall out with Corona, say you get it, you have to quarantine for two weeks. Yep. You'd so be you'll be fully for... online now. You'll be fully online. Okay. That's the great part about this. If there is a great part is if I'm sick for a day, or if I twist my ankle or anything like that, and I, I wouldn't go to school anyway, I have everything accessible for me to get work done for that day. Now, obviously, if you're in hospital and you're laid out, laid up, and you can't do anything, it would be no different than if that was happening in, you know, in a regular environment where I'm in the hospital, we're going to, you know, be flexible for you, you're going to get work sent home, and you'll get extra time to complete it. Um, so if those things happen, obviously, we're going to adapt to that. Uh, but if I'm just not feeling well, or maybe I have uh, a fever and a sore throat, and I'm concerned I have COVID, and I'm tested, and I have to wait for the test to come back, I'm just a full-time virtual student. Make sense? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Anybody else? I have um, something. Aiden. Yeah. Um, I have a family member who works within the North Babylon district, and okay. they have a slightly different system. This is more or less of a suggestion. I know this question was already answered earlier. Thank you. Earlier. I'm good for suggestions, too. But um, what they're doing is that for one week, cohort A goes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then cohort B goes Thursday, Friday. Yes. On and the then weekend, they, yeah. Then it switches. And then it switches the next week. Yep. And then yes. Okay. So, so let me let me explain. I don't know if I, I some I, I've spoken so much that I don't know if I said this, but let me explain why. So the reason we're doing it the way we're doing is to be more careful. And I'm not saying that North Babylon is not careful. This is just the way we chose to do it, following the guidelines. Monday and Tuesday is one cohort. Thursday, Friday. Right now, to start school, Wednesday, everybody's home. The reason is. We can do a real deep cleaning of the school. Nobody will be in and no teachers will be in, no students will be in. It'll just be me and the custodians, right? Uh, and the secretary or whatever. So we're gonna clean the school. Additionally, the teachers are gonna use that time, part of that day or a good part of that day to work on really higher level online lessons for all of you so that you're not just doing nothing in a class and falling behind. Third is they're also going to have the opportunity to work with professional development to maybe learn a new platform or to find ways to do better instruction. And then on top of that, they have to get in contact with all of you, everybody in the classes, you know, on a Wednesday. It, Wednesday, in my opinion, and again, I don't want to make, I don't want to say this is definite. Wednesday is not going to be like a huge, huge academic day to start because it's just going to be more of a check-in, maybe some review maybe getting everybody on the same page because on Monday and Tuesday, half the class was live and half the class is virtual. So I may stay Wednesday doing a Zoom, say, getting everybody up to speed, making sure we're all on the same page, doing some review, you know, starting some new information, okay? So okay. that's the way we're gonna start. Now, our hope is that will be valuable time to start. 
We'll keep everybody in school at least two days a week because we'll be doing our cleaning. And then things are going really, really good for two weeks. And we say, okay, now we're going to get rid of Wednesday's virtual and we're going to do it every other day. Wednesday is a red day. The next week is a white day. Now I got kids in school three days a week, every other week. And then two weeks later, things are going really, really good. And we say, all right, we're ready to pull the trigger. We've got this process down. The restrictions are lifted a little bit. And you know, a month into it, now everybody's coming back to school. That's, that's, so we're going to do it in progressions to make sure okay. we have time. We, have, we, we can account for anything that comes up that we're not thinking about. We're going to have that Wednesday day to keep things clean. And then we'll, we'll build from there if that works. Sounds good. That's our mentality. All right, thanks. All right, who's next? Hi. Uh, I have a quick question. Okay, Izzy. It's, yeah, I was just wondering, I know you said that like the electives are really on like a case-by-case -case scenario like basis, but like what do you, do you know anything that's gonna be happening with like classes that have like large groups of people in it like chorus or broadcasting usually, like what is gonna kind of happen like with those types of classes that you kind of like need active participation with? Well, so, so like I said, I'll use chorus as an example. If you're in chorus now, you know, normally you're in the LGI and you're on the stage, right? Um, and everybody is on the, on, the, uh, uh, on the stage and you're all singing together. We're still having chorus, okay? But it's going to be, obviously on a red day, it could be about half. Now you guys have to understand, A to L, M to Z doesn't always mean 50%, you know? They're, 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 it could vary from class to class. So let's well, just using round numbers. Half the class, half the chorus class is in on Monday and Tuesday. You're going to work as a group in a large area. Like I said, it could be the auditorium. You could be in you know every other row in the auditorium instead of standing next to each other. Or you could be in the gym, 12 feet apart. You could be outside on the tra uh, on the uh, turf or on the grass fields in the back, singing your hearts out. Okay. Um, so so it will be half the class. And then on Thursday, Friday, the other half class will be doing, you know, the same work, except it'll be just different people together. And then, like I said, if things get better and we can hit, put more kids together, we'll do that. Now, I do want to, um, and this is very specific to music and, and also athletics, is that we are purchasing and we are installing um, a video camera in the gym and outside on the turf field. Uh, specifically, I, initially it was for athletics, but it's basically an ability to live stream anything that happens on the turf field or the gym. So, uh, so if we had a basketball game or a lacrosse game out on the turf, uh, we're literally going to be able to live stream to the community if we get sports back and they can, we, and we're not allowed to have fans watch the game, they can live stream it into their computer. Like we've, uh, you know, we've had done for playoff games, um, you know, through the New York state public high school athletic association. But the advantage now is if I have music, I maybe if this doesn't lift in time for the first concert, we may be able to have a concert or at least half a concert or two halves of conference co concerts in the gym, live streaming it to the parents. Um, so not that that's the be all and end all, but a um, little bit of a positive thing that we may be able to use those cameras to, to do performances or, or do anything for, for, for our community or our families or our parents. Um, so does that answer your question is? Yeah, thank you. Okay, who's next? Can you talk about how it's going to affect the IB program? Um, right now, it's I mean we're we're working with the uh, with IB itself, and and when I say we, I'm talking about Dr. Flynn Trace, um, and I'm getting transition now that Mr. Caswell is leaving, and Ms. Olia uh, from district office. Um, right now, everything's uh, IB is adapting too to this. Uh, we I just read a couple of and. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to dig deep into all this yet, um, but ID, IB is adapting also. Um, I, I found out from a parent that IB, there were some IB issues in uh, other schools at the end of last year with distance learning and, and scoring of things and things like that. IB is sending out a lot of correspondence cur currently. Uh, they're going to be adapting because they understand that schools are either uh, hybrid or some are there are actually some schools on Long Island that are full distance learning and they're not even doing hybrid um, so IB is adapting we will adapt with it um, the instruction is going to be the instruction that's expected uh, that's in person is going to match as best possible the online 
Uh, but more to come on that. We are working hard behind the scenes to make sure that even though we're starting for this for the first time this year, um, we're, we're going to make sure we do everything we can with the help of IB to make sure um, the transition is fine under the hybrid version. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Okay. More information to come. I know that wasn't a great in-depth answer, but, but we are aware of that and we are going to make sure that, that um, you know, you're not shortchanged in any way, shape, or form. Anybody else? Um, hi. Hi. Uh, I was just like curious about like the logistics or possibility of like in-person classes being recorded in some way for kids online. Because I still- Like I said, like I said, uh, and this is Connor, right? Yeah. Okay, um, so like I said, that is a possibility. Um, you know, they, they, they could be recorded, they could be live streamed, they could be, like I said, audio only. Um, it's, it's going to depend on the teacher, it's going to depend on the comfortableness of the platform. It's gonna, uh, it, to be honest with you, it's also gonna um, depend upon um, technology. Um, so as you might expect, you know, and I'll give you a little funny story is, I have this webcam, um, uh, portable webcam on my work computer right now, uh, there's only one that we have in the district right now. So Miss uh, Dr. Uh, Reggio had a faculty meeting with the webcam at 10 o'clock. I was literally in our office at 5 to 12 and I had to rip it out of her computer and bring it down to me uh, so I could run this one here. Um, so technology is a concern. So as you might expect, we as a school have to go out and get a lot of technology so that teachers can either video tape or audio or um, scan things and things like that. Stuff that we had a little bit of that we need a lot more of now. Now, on top of that is that every school under the sun is now ordering those types of things and now there's a shortage. So that's gonna impact, at least possibly impact the beginning of school. But yes, you should see, and I can't say that everybody's gonna live video um, every class, but you will see that. Uh, but there'll be a version or the biggest and most important thing, although I know all of you learn differently and some of you have preferences on the way you learn, we get that. But the big focus we have right now is to make sure instruction during the school day and for the whole week matches what's happening online uh, in person. Um, and again, there are gonna be variations of that. Um, and I'll give an example of a situation where um, you may be, a, a, it's like a flipped classroom, and if I understand it correctly, you know, maybe online you're gonna be given something to read, and in person on Monday and Tuesday, they're going to discuss it. And then on Thursday and Friday when you come in, you're gonna discuss it, and they're gonna be reading something, or some kind of version of that. So there's a lot of different ways that instruction is gonna look. It's gonna be depend on the comfortableness of the teacher, but that's why it's very important for us to give them additional time, at least to start in September on Wednesdays to prepare lessons and to make sure it's robust instruction online and in person. Okay. All right. Thank you. You got it. Anybody else? Hi, Mr. Thode. Yes. Hi. Um, so for like the days that I'm online, um, you like kind of answer it, but, um, does, do I have to like be on the computer at a certain time to do my work or is no. it like whenever? Yeah, no, so, so again, um, I, the way I operate, me personally, is that I'm a creature of habit. So I would, if I'm you, if I'm a student, I would probably, if more, more than likely, unless something happened in my day, I would try to follow my schedule just to yeah. stay on task and whatever else. But we understand, and again, these are things we're going to work out in the first couple of weeks because again teachers aren't in until a couple of days before school starts and we're feeding them information now when they're on summer of eight break and where you know a lot of them are, are already jumping in um you know whatever else um so so uh you know we understand that all of you may not be able to or may not be a, uh, interested in you know following the period by period day when you're online um so we're going to be flexible we understand that some kids are going to be afternoon people because they're babysitting their, their first and third grade, you know, brother yeah. all day. I, like help out. I was going to like help out with my siblings. So I didn't right, know. right. So mom and dad are working full time. And now I have a, a sophomore in school and, and, a, and a brother and sister that are in first and third grade that have to do their work uh, because everybody. So the reason, again, the other reason we are doing the A to L to M to Z is so that every family is on the red or white cohort. Like you can't. Well, also, I have a question about that. 
Yeah. Like me and my siblings legally have different last names. Yes, so we can account for that. So that's another example. Remember I said earlier about BOCES being in a similar co cohort. If there's yeah. a need by an individual family who have, may have different last names, we will adjust cohorts. We just need to know that information. Okay, because my mom emailed and he said it was like by household. So I was just wondering when I got my schedule. Yeah. Mom, if you if your mom's having any issue, you can have mom email me, and I'll I'll look into it and work with her. Okay. Thank you. No. Also, one more thing. So yes. I I don't know if I missed it, but when we're actually in school, are we like do we still need like to buy school books and stuff, or is it like we're using computers in school also? Um. Again. Again. You know, we want to operate like school's gonna eventually be normal. You know. Mm -hmm. When you come into school, like no, you know, you no longer have, you know, your, your supply list from elementary school and whatever else, you're going to come into school and your teachers are going to let you know what you need. Uh, so okay. the first day of school, if you're on the red cohort and you're coming in on the eighth, um, you know, you're going to bring a, a you know, a, a notebook and a pen or a pencil and, you know, you're going to work from there and your teachers are going to tell you what you need supply wise as we go. Yeah, I just didn't know because some people yeah. are saying they're like bringing their computers or something. Yeah, well, so right now, know, right, like right that. now, nobody can bring their computer, yeah. own personal computers until we figure out if it's possible as a school district. Um, so right now, the first day of school is just bring a piece of paper, I mean, a, a okay. book and a pen and a pencil. Every individual teacher will tell you what supplies they need. Um, obviously, it could alter because we're going to be a lot of online, at least half the, half the week. Uh, yeah. So we'll figure that out as we go. But okay, thank you. Kayla, you have something? Anybody else? Hello. Are oh, no. Uh, Hold on. Who we got? Go ahead. Uh, all right. <laughs> um, so what's going to happen with like uh, the CSIP points? Um, okay, so C CSIP points, I would not, don't anybody panic about CSIP or whatever else. Uh, just like at the end of last year, um, uh, you know, we'll figure it out. Um, it's not, you know, if we have to adjust it as a district or whatever else, we'll adjust it as a district or, you know, uh, it, it's not going to be an issue. We'll figure it out. If, if we will figure that out, that at a certain point, if this is the way it's going to be for a long period of time, we'll, we'll make some kind of adjustments or alternative or whatever to figure it out. So don't worry about that. And right now, um, you know, we don't have any direction whether we're going to be regents exams in January for anybody who needs to make them up or next June or, you know, SATs and all that stuff. All of that stuff right now is, you know, on pause until we get further direction. So don't anybody like worry about that yet. We'll figure it out once we get more information, which unfortunately comes slowly to us from the higher ups in New York State and everything else. All right, thank you. You got it. Anybody else? Again, again, remember, if you're not comfortable asking questions or something come, pops into your mind afterwards, you can email me. Hi, sorry, I, I'm at work right now. I had uh, to handle something. You gotta serve something. somebody? No, I had to answer a phone. I work okay. at an office. Well, that's serving somebody. Um, okay. Do you have, does the school have any adjustments made to um, like teaching plans or anything like that to account for the loss of work or the loss of focus at the end of the year last year okay I so mean, catch catching up to things that might have been missed at the end of the school year yes because okay. I mean I definitely yep. checked out towards the end right. of the year right so so we we have had discussion um, uh, and this is Alyssa right yes uh, so we have had discussions in general terms about you know kind of uh, filling in the gaps from last year um, mm -hmm. this, this again is one of the things that we are working on presently. I don't have a specific yeah. answer for you right now, um, but mm -hmm. we're going to have to account for some things, I'm sure. Um, you know, yeah. and again, think about it logically. You know, think about the elementary school. You know, uh, where yeah. you, you guys are old enough to kind of, you know, read things and do all other things. So, so um, I'll get you more information on that as as a group. Uh, if, mm -hmm when and what that will look like and uh, I can't give you specifics yet but I will make sure we discuss it first. Are we still doing um is early dismissal still an idea or is it completely so, off the table? So if again whoever whoever you know I, I'm going to repeat myself a little bit because I know some people came and caught came and gone came and left um, and then came back mm -hmm. and new people were added. So our schedule right now is not completely determined. You're going to get out early. Periods are, periods are shortened. 
There's going yes. to be more period uh, time in between each periods for safety purposes and cleaning purposes and bathroom purposes and things like that. Mm -hmm. And you're going to let out early. So let's just say you're let out at 1.30. I'm just using that. I'm not saying that's what it is, but let's just say that's the thing. If you have a schedule where you have early release for some work program, yes, yeah. get out seventh period, you would get out seventh period, which now might be 12.15. Okay. okay. Just remember, your schedules are staying the same normal like anything else. It's just mm -hmm. a certain period. It's almost like a two-hour delay when we have short periods. You, okay. If you're leaving early, you'll leave early based on your situation. In fact, quite honestly, the more people are leaving early, the safer the school is, in our opinion, because there's less yeah. people in the room. So yes, you. So if you had early release and you're in that program because you're doing a job, and you left sixth, seventh period, that's the time it would. It would just be different than the normal time because it would be earlier in the day. And have you thought of possibly, like, opening up the school to? Yeah the opposite cohorts for the days um, in the afternoon day. after the red, like let's say it's a red cohort day yep. and it's 10th and period and some people from the white cohort are completely lost and they want to come back to school for like 10th period to actually yeah. speak face to face. Okay. Would that be a possibility? Like right now, right now, that is not what we're, what we're doing because you got to understand yeah. this also is that chunk of time, which is basically a longer period 10, that chunk mm -hmm. of time is the teachers are going to be doing a lot of things. They're going to be checking attendance for the online people. They're going to have some office hours. They may be posting something. They may be replying to emails, things like that. So they may not be available. That's why we're going to have online office hours where you can make an appointment um, to do that. And right now, also, when school ends early, we're still doing cleaning. Because even though uh -huh. the cohorts in on Monday and Tuesday, we still have to clean and disinfect all the desks and all the doorknobs and all the this, that, the other thing. So that if people are tra coming in the building, because again, mm -hmm. we're regular visitors, we have to account for that and clean. Now, as we go forward, as restrictions lift a little bit, we may look at something uh -huh. like that and say, okay, maybe we do that. Um, so I'm going to write that down as an option. And um, um, well, I'm just looking at it, and like at the moment, yeah. you're shortening classes, which is decreasing face-to-face -face time. Yep. Tenth period completely cut off the table. Right. I know some that even stayed after yeah. tenth period because they needed the help. Right. I mean, you're I right. tenth period. I hell on my lunch period, I would be going to teachers for help. Right. And now that's cut off too. Right. And that's a lot of extra time that some students, myself included, right. needed speak to teachers and it's just all online now. That's, that's, it's a, that's a phenomenal point in question. And again, just think of it this way. The first couple of weeks of September, we got to put things in place to get this working um, mm -hmm. and adjust as we go. Um, certainly, obviously, you would still be allowed if teachers are available to use um, lunch periods and study halls um, to get extra help. Uh, but you make a huge, huge point that's very valid, especially at the high school where we have that 10 period extra help where a red cohort on a Monday, Tuesday now doesn't have that available to them. I get that now. Mm -hmm. That's a, this is exactly why I did this meeting because yeah. as I try to think of everything, you guys really remember and understand things a lot better than I do in your daily lives. So again, let's just worry about getting through September and getting our procedures in place and things safe. Um, I'm mm -hmm. bringing that up again it's tomorrow at seven o'clock in the morning. Every administrator in the district, including central office, we're meeting uh, at seven o'clock in the morning to go over all this stuff and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I'm going to bring mm -hmm. it up and see, you know, how we put that in place moving forward. Uh -huh. Anything else? Okay. Um, I don't think so. Okay. What is the actual start date of school? That might be a good question. September eighth. Okay, thank you. The first day for red cohort, uh, so that would be you, right? Uh, will be Tuesday, and it will be just red, and then Wednesday's virtual for everybody, and then starting on Thursday and Friday, the 10th and 11th would be white. Mm -hmm. And is it absolutely, I, I might have said it wrong, but the way that um, I was understanding the whole six feet apart thing was that if you are six feet apart, you don't need to wear the mask. Is the mask like an extra precaution that the school's putting in place just yes. in case? Or so again, I'm going to talk to you all like young adults. Um, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's very, um, you know, a lot of these, um, the, the fact that they send out these guidelines and different schools can do different things is bothersome to me. 
because you know we're taking it seriously and we, we believe we're doing everything we can and some things are open to um, interpretation uh, we are going on the on the on the way safety side and we're saying six feet apart and masks again we can two weeks from now we've trained all of you to do it we could say all right restrict it or we got more guidance and we can take them on during instruction uh, schools are allowing masks down during instruction and that's fine um, we're not willing to take the risk especially once you know all are in the building all together at once for the first time and we're going to gamble you know uh, so we're we're being more restrictive in the interest of safety okay but that is subject to change everything's subject to change everything is fluid we are we're ready to pivot wherever we can number one to make things better for you guys uh, and number two to move from any direction we need to do without you know having a problem so we like i said earlier we can go to full distance learning without having a problem we can bring you all back into school on a regular school day from you know first period to 10th period without a problem because we've kept everything in place to make it as smooth as possible any direction we have to pivot okay and um sorry i thought you um, said you didn't have any more questions i usually don't i just keep talking Go ahead, you know I'm that kidding. no um, every, every question is great the second i don't know what it would be called we have the one that we use for um senior hangout area the second one that we never use with the gazebo in it the second outside yeah. square. Courtyard. You know what I mean? The courtyard, yes, the courtyard. Is that finally gonna be used this year or is that? Well, so again, so, so what you should know and understand is the reason that one isn't used generally is because mm -hmm. windows to all the classrooms and if kids are hanging out, goofing around, mm -hmm. who's looking out the window, you know what I mean? So that's the yeah. major reason we don't do it. We are considering putting chairs out there. And if you saw the pictures I showed earlier of the cafeteria, I faced yeah. that could be an instructional space, you know, during mm -hmm. non-period, non-cafeteria um, uh, hours. The reason mm -hmm. we face yeah. the cafeteria is because if we face chairs out the, out the windows, kids are gonna be looking out the window. Um, so, exactly. so we might like put chairs in there as a small instructional space facing like the gym, so that, you know, whatever, or, or the wall where the special ed education classrooms are, because if you face the classroom, the chairs facing the one or the 200 wing, kids mm -hmm. can be distracted and potentially people that are in their classes. So, so it is an option. It's not an ideal option, but again, mm -hmm. every table if we need it. Well, it might even make more sense. I mean, there's so many windows. That's technically someone monitoring the right. area. That yeah. might make more sense to just turn that into the right. senior hangout this year you know right. let a few people there at a time you don't have right. to wear your mask there's not well, you have to wear your mask see that's the thing even if you're outside you have to wear your mask even outside yeah on school grounds yes wow okay that's see again that goes back to what we talked about before which is you know you guys are used to out in the summer right now going to the beach hanging out <laughs> we're outside everything's great we can't allow that in school you have to be this socially distanced to the best of our abilities and wearing masks mm -hmm. okay yeah and again subject to change if restrictions ease mm -hmm. i don't think i have any more questions all right anybody else yeah i have a question God, is this haley yeah okay so what about regions and AP exams, like towards the end of the year? Is that still going to be like a thing that we're going to have to do? Or is it so, going to be- So like I, I, I think I just said this a little bit a while ago. Um, right now, we have no guidance. That's not our decision. That's from the state. Right now, last year, the, the regions and, and exams were canceled and everybody got credit for them if they were in a class that was a regions class. Right now, the state has not given us any guidance. To, the regions are given it twice a year in January for people that have to like make up one or they want to get, try to get a better score. And then in June, right now we have no guidance. Um, if they tell us that they're on, we're going to have regents exams in a socially distanced environment. If they say they're canceled again, then the kids that are in those classes would get credit. Okay. okay. And um, extra classes like let's say psychology and criminal justice, those are still going to be able to be like taken. Every or... class, everything is normal as far as your classes. Right okay. now, like I said, the class periods are going to be reduced a couple of minutes each. And what, um, Alyssa, what you had said earlier, and I think I mentioned it before, 
Yes, class time is gonna be shortened, but as you now know, the amount of kids in class is gonna be drastically reduced. So yet it's kind of like a trade-off, less, a couple of extra period, minutes less, but smaller class, which is a better environment for learning because the teacher doesn't have to account for 29 kids, they only have to account for maybe 10 kids and move, you know, the instruction can go faster, handing things out can be faster, you know, so there's more efficiency in having a smaller classroom, even though two or three minutes, um, you know, have been reduced. So that's the trade off. Okay. And uh, one last question. So let's say that you don't have like a study hall or a lunch. This is more so for band, but yep. to have lessons and stuff, would we have like online lessons? I know you were talking that about that yes. before because me personally, I don't have a lunch or a study hall. Yep. So mm -hmm. I have a full schedule. So yeah. I would be so, able to have band lessons. Yes. So, so um, again, every day we're talking. So I've been talking with the music staff um, and that was one of the ideas that if you can't have um lunch or study hall uh, lessons, there'll be virtual lessons. Um, we've also talked about, and again, this is one of those things we talk about as, as a possibility, you know, after the first few weeks of school when we get everything in line, is that maybe Wednesdays, the music staff, because they're not gonna be necessarily doing lessons every period like they normally do, maybe Wednesdays will be an opportunity where we can bring kids in, maybe not even into school, but maybe on nice days out on the turf, um, you know, and you can get your lessons out there. Um, so that's something we can build towards potentially is Wednesdays, because that was a conversation Mr. Conifer and I had, is that maybe that's something we can do after we get into a routine and, you know, uh, you know, <clears throat> obviously, um, you know, the band teacher is, is not going to have assignments necessarily. They're going to want to work with their kids one on one or small group or, you know, the, the large group virtually. So. Wednesdays is another option we will look at um, after we get settled in after a couple of weeks. Okay, thank you. You got it. Anyone else? Um, I have a question. Yep. This is Aaron. Yeah. Okay. Um, you brought up the mass breaks before. Do you have any idea of how those are going to work? No, no, we're, we're, we will know and you will know ahead of time and we'll, you know, again, you got to understand that when you come in, the first time you come in, whether you're a red cohort or white cohort, the first time you come in, there's going to be a lot of instruction, you know, so like the first day of school may not be a lot of academic work, it's going to be routine, it's going to be explaining, it's going to be masks, it's going to be how we operate in the classroom, you know, it's going to be a lot yeah. of basic stuff. Um, so again, we're looking into the guidelines and the experts and the medical professionals about what's the best way to do things to keep the most safety to the most amount of people as often as we can. So that is something we're gonna be discussing again in depth tomorrow when I meet with administration, um, but we'll get that information to those types of, those types of um, information to all of you guys as we, as we figure it out. I envision, again, possibility of me doing more Zooms before school starts. At the very least, I'm sure I'm going to be sending you emails on your, your Senator Rich's accounts and or posting things on the website or, so, or social media or like checklists just so that you have more information and you're not like confused or as list, little confused confusion as possible before you walk in the, uh, the door the first day. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. Mr. Thode. All right. Yeah, what's up, buddy? Who is this? Because um, all I see is certified epic gamer. Who's yeah, that? sorry. I was just on a Zoom call with friends before, and uh, that was just the name I put in. But um, I'm Robert Fahey. I actually talked before. And yeah, I no, I know you did. I just didn't know who it was. Yeah, so I just wanted to uh, thank you for putting this all together, because I'm sure this this – really put my mind and I'm sure several other people in the zoom call and if people spread this information around their minds at ease all right great I appreciate that thank you for all this you got it anybody else with questions or suggestions I'll give it about 15 seconds in case something pops up again remember I'm gonna post this video um, I will, if anybody wants to reach out to me privately, that's hundred percent, no problem. Um, I'll meet with anybody. If you want to meet, walk around the school, whatever needed, I will offer, you know, if I have to, I'll do another live. 
Um, I will continue to communicate with you via email or posting things or social media. Um, I'm going to probably annoy you so much with over communication um, once I get settled in. Um, but if, if you're like just antsy about something and something comes up and you haven't heard from me, honestly, please, I don't care. I check my emails all day long, all night long. Email me. I, you know, some of you have already emailed me at different times of day and I reply pretty much as quick as I can, uh, sometimes immediately. Um, so don't ever feel like you're, you know, bothering me or you don't want to be a pain or anything like that. It's my job is to make it as comfortable and as easy as possible for you. All right. Um, and then it, it, just so you know, if you don't already know, I'm going to do the same, pretty much the same presentation tomorrow for parents. Um, so, um, you know, and that will be recorded as well. Um, so if your parents didn't know about this or they want to join or they have more questions, they certainly can be on, you could be on with them. I really wanted this to, for the most part. Um, you know, and I know some parents, you know, have come on this one, but I wanted this to be an opportunity where you guys can speak freely if you had questions. Um, and it just to be us. So it was just, um, you know, uh, you know, just a school kind of thing. Um, and then do something separate for parents. So, um, so I'll give you one more chance. Anybody think of any other questions? Okay. All right. So that's awesome. I appreciate all the time. I know I spent a lot of time here, um, but it was great that you guys all stuck in there. Um, and uh, I want you to make sure you enjoy as much time as you have left. Do whatever you need to do to, you know, relax. Um, you know, I know some of you are working a lot of type of stuff, but, um, but I really want you to enjoy the rest of the time you have. And I look forward to seeing you or hearing from you or whatever else. And as I said, I'll update you if anything changes. I'll update you if we decide what uh, who's the principal and all that type of stuff. When that happens, I'll let you know that as well. Um, but um, that's it. All right. So everybody have a great day and enjoy the rest of your summer. Thank you. You too. You got Thank it. You. Bye.